All right, guys, here we go. We're going to get this started. My audio seems a little quiet here. here. All right. All right. Take those Take off. Take those off. Don't need those. Don't need those. How are we sounding? How are we sounding? Are we sounding okay? Are we lagging? What's going on, guys? What is going on? Let's move that off to the side here. How are we doing? All right, so um, no, I should do my show intro and stuff. Hi there. <laughs> Hello and welcome. My name is Brent. Jesus. Hello and welcome. My name is Brendan and this is Accidental Origin, your weekly writing web show. What's going on, guys? How are you doing? I'm doing good. It's a nice Sunday morning. What is going on? Um, do I have, hey proud, thanks for the host dude, I appreciate it, um, so what was I thinking, okay, so today, uh, I kind of wanted to do a few things to catch up with what I was doing, like, cut, well, stream maintenance, <laughs> not exactly, uh, I kind of have a bunch of outgoing projects and I want to finish some of them or at least get a handle on where I'm at and try and make a game plan for the next next little while. Um, but yeah, um, any news, any news. Last week we released... <laughs> Last week we released the uh, second episode of the podcast where we finished um, The Last Wish by Andrei Sapukovsky, uh, which is the first book in the Witcher series. It was pretty cool. I'm not quite done. I'm a slacker and I'm behind. Uh, next week we will be doing uh, this guy, Ursula K. Le Guin's The, Depos the Dispossessed. Um, yeah gonna be cool this is a very highly recommended book uh we will be joined by my good friend lucas for that stream um so that will be april 3rd at 8 p.m eastern standard time in case you're wondering that's the rewrite podcast that's the cast i started with my good friend and mod mc pepper pockets himself samuel um so yeah that's all the plugs out of the way. Other than that, I don't have that any other really interesting stream announcements yet. <laughs> There's always something in the pipeline. Um, so yeah, let's flip to some stuff. Uh, plug. <laughs> hey man. You do what you gotta do, okay? How's the audio, by the way? Is it uh, is it working properly? I just wanna make sure, cause I had to do a bunch of configuration stuff last time, which sucked. So, uh, start with our magnificently titled unfinished projects list. <laughs> Things I need to work on. Um, Let's see, uh, remove that. I have a problem writing straight, which makes no sense, but it's, it's fine. Uh, so we got uh, things I was working on last week. Uh, the Old Rune short story, that definitely needs to be worked on. I 
have my, <clears throat> excuse me, I have Confrontation. Oh, that's the wrong one. I want this one. Okay. Um, I have. Um. So, drafting dungeon we did. That's fine. Fear the siren. We got issues three and four to do. Uh, not aliens is done. Oh, we have the journal entry for Drani that I want to do at least one more draft on. I mean, she's probably not going to ever get to this, but I want to have it done in case she does. <laughs> so that's like flash fiction. So that's cool. I already put the older in short story. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. I have a thing for really expensive, really expensive, really fancy keyboards. I'm of the opinion if you're gonna have, if you're gonna be using things all the time, you should have good ones. Um, part of my job, like at work, I sell electronics. <laughs> And people are always like, oh man, this $30 keyboard is is so expensive or this $30 mouse is so expensive. And I'm just like, really? <laughs> because because you're, you're going to use it for like a year. It's going to break. It's not going to be big enough. It's not going to have enough buttons. It's not going to have the right amount of, like it won't track in the right ways. I don't know. Maybe I'm just an elitist PC god or something, but <laughs> uh, before the magic ended, short story. Cool. I gotta do that. Anyway, so the point of that story was that um, I don't mind spending money on th uh, money on things that I use all the time. So. You know, I spend a large portion of my day at my keyboard, either writing or being on Twitch or playing games or whatever I'm doing. So for me, uh, investing money in a good keyboard is not a problem. I love this thing. It feels so nice. Uh, it's a lot quieter. I've, I've been using SteelSeries peripherals for a long time, uh, basically ever since I started building my own PCs. Um, ah, that's a weird, I started, I built my first PC when I was 12. I've been using steel series since I left high school. So yeah, <laughs> but that's fine. I mean, um, yeah, I'm a big fan of them. I was, I was big in the Starcraft scene when Starcraft two first came out. So everyone was using like six GB twos and seven G's, uh, which are old steel series keyboards. probably show you let's pull up some images here 
Because why not? Why not? Bam. Okay. Let's do this. This is a 60 V2. Uh, these are kind of like the cool mechanical keyboards that people started using in the StarCraft days that really were exploding. So I've been using them a while. I'm a really big fan of their peripherals. I'm not a huge fan of Razer, for example. <laughs> um, but that's all personal preference stuff. Like that's not, I don't knock their stuff. <laughs> Uh, the clicking on the mouse or the clicking on the keys? So the keys will be loud, for sure. My keys are definitely loud. Uh, it helps when I'm using this mic, though. Uh, on my blue, like I have a Blue Yeti over here that my friend lent me <laughs> for a long time, for which I'm really grateful. Um, on, the, on the blue, it picks up like mad. But on this mic, it's not nearly as bad. Though, kind of... Part of what I like about having that click is, I mean, this is a writing stream. There's going to be a lot of clicking. It's kind of part of the rhythm and sound and, and almost like it's kind of like right, the breath of my writing, you know, like how it works. So I, I kind of like it. <laughs> I know it can be loud and stuff, but yeah. I kind of like it. Yeah, I, I'm using an Audio Technica. This guy here is an Audio Technica 2020. It's hooked up into a uh, Behringer Zenex Q802 uh, mixer, which is basically just a, a two channel USB mixer. Pretty solid. Um, I got the two channel because it was like an extra $20 over the single channel. Um, yeah, it's like, it was like $20 over the single channel and I wanted to have the option if I, if I needed to, to hook up another device into it. I do play some music and stuff. I'm not very good, <laughs> but I do play some. So, uh, I w yeah, I just wanted to have options basically. I'm going to turn my gain up a little bit here because I think I'm a little low. Yeah, I think there's good. I think there's good. Hmm. Had a weird spike there. That's odd. Whoa. Computer spiking again. Strange. Anyway. Oh, well, I'm sure it'll, it'll figure itself out. So anyway, uh, I really like this keyboard. Um, it's been a while since I've had a keyboard with macro keys on it. I've actually set them up to writing software, which is cool. <laughs> um, so like, this will open, like, uh, I have things. I have stream set up. Got to put my piece back in. So this one here, number one, I don't use zero for anything. Um, I, have a, I have a tendency to hit escape a lot, so I don't use zero for anything because I'll hit it by accident. But uh, one is uh, is my Scrivener software. Uh, two is Hemingway, which is a uh, readability software that I really like. Uh, three is Chrome. Four is uh, a macro for putting into Thoris.com. <laughs> and five is my Mr. Destructoid. Um, is my Mr. Destructoid macro. So yeah. <laughs> the other cool thing about this keyboard, <laughs> excuse me, is that every single key is uh, individually LED lit. So you can actually set up different schemes for things. Currently, this is my, uh... <laughs> hey Sam, by the way, 
Uh, this is my like writing theme that I've actually set up using the colors from the anime Gundam Wing, like different mechs. Uh, but for example, like I have like a Max Payne one because I've been playing Max Payne. So it only, uh, I'll pull it up again. So it's like, these are my weapon keys and WASD and then interact, reload, movement stuff. Like I have it all set up, uh, quick load or uh, quick save, quick load. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have a Mr. Destructoid macro uh, because it's useful for me <laughs> in the streams I hang out with. It's really funny because the keyboard, I deleted the presets because I don't need them. <laughs> they were kind of just taking up space. But the original keyboard came with uh, like snake and stuff like pre-installed so like you could set it to that setting and play snake on your keyboard using your arrow keys and stuff like it was really ridiculous <laughs> but this is a this is a stupid expensive keyboard and it is probably unnecessary there's some really nice there's um some nice versions of this without some of the fancy led stuff that is really good um the other is the cool thing about it, uh, when you get when you pay for a keyboard like this, is you don't get um, you don't get any ghosting of keys. So I can literally hit every single key on this keyboard at the same time, and it will key out every single one <laughs> uh, without missing any, which is cool. Um, so the only other thing on the stream that I wanted to do or I wanted to get caught up on was Erica Drayton's Hey Sam, can you can you shout out Erica Drayton for me? Can you do it? Uh Do you know the commands? <laughs> yes. Yes, that's what I'm saying, Brad. Exactly. Fine, I got it. Eric Drayton's a good friend of mine. She is also a writing streamer, and she is releasing something uh, this weekend coming up on Saturday. Um, and I should be able to come for most of that release stream. Hopefully, I think I'll be able to. <laughs> what was I? Oh. I know what I'm doing. What are you talking about? So I need to do number one, number two, number three, number four, and number six. Because I already did number five. Sam, is there anything, now that you're here, is there anything I've missed, like any projects that I have left unfinished so far? we got yeah the old rune short story the two issues of fear of the siren i have left that journal thing for drawney which i haven't finished before the magic ended that one short story i was looking on and then erica drayton's challenges <laughs> shh it's fine okay 
I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> let's be honest. Real talk chat. Uh, I do start things on <laughs> almost every week, but I only tend to work on them within the context of that week, and they're not really ongoing things. So I do a lot of challenges and uh, f- practice of like dialogue and stuff and like, things like that. I just I don't need to do <laughs> continue on. I don't think I'm missing anything though. I don't think I'm missing anything. Hmm. <laughs> that that's fair Sam that's totally fair so let's jot down unfinished projects off stream so we can be clear Uh, dinner, traveling, and, uh, my project proposal for Schmandru. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, Sam. You are correct. I don't think I'm missing anything. Those would be the three main things. Everything else is kind of not important. So I haven't missed anything? I don't think I missed anything. Oh, I have not mentioned that yet. I was hoping Allison would show up and I could be all enthusiastic. <laughs> at some point <laughs> get a quad bot for quotes and use those as you do that's not a terrible plan <laughs> that is not a terrible plan where's my list uh, here we go no it's fine she's not here <laughs> list uh, bot for project tracking. <laughs> hey, Maffinator. Uh, not much, man. I'm just, uh, write that down. Uh, I'm just kind of trying, well, so today I decided that I wanted, or I guess last night I decided that I want to do I want to kind of get some of this stuff that I've left unfinished off my plate. Um, <laughs> uh, off my plate so that I can, you know, just keep doing different exercises and projects and, and things that I was doing. Uh, so I made a list. I made a list of things that are undone that I want to do and can do on stream. And then a couple of things that are undone that I'm doing off stream so that Sam doesn't get confused. Um, what else will I do? Uh, that's pretty much it. Obviously, uh, <laughs> Obviously that, uh, what was I saying? Oh man. Oh my God. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's pretty magical. So I'm cool with that. Um, 
I totally lost my train of thought though. What was I thinking? Right, so I want to just kind of get caught up on things, get some stuff done. Uh, obviously, the website is a ongoing project that I am behind on, but I caught up a bit. Um, I did do some work on this last week, and I'm going to try and do more <laughs> this week uh, so I can actually get caught up with that, which is cool. And uh, yeah, so the other thing I decided about today was that I'm actually going to be on Discord, uh, and I think Sam's going to join me, and um, if you're cool with that, Sam, you said yesterday you were, so you can't back out now, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to jump on Discord, and we're going to have a chat about writing, and I'm going to work on some of the stuff that we got here, and uh, yeah. Cool. All right. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> uh, I thought about it. Um, I thought about it. <laughs> I could probably actually do that. It wouldn't be that even that hard. <laughs> I gotta like log into Discord and stuff though. Uh, this is a problem with having two two accounts on on Twitch. <laughs> is sometimes it's really easy to do stuff, and sometimes it's really annoying to do stuff. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, Sam, if you want to just jump into the Discord, that'd be sweet. And we'll get that started. And, uh, I can't remember for the life of me what my password for Discord is because I never use this account. Yep. Um, let me just do something real quick here. You are here. Check out checking out my website. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's legit. <laughs> Can you hear me, Sam? Oh, oh man, okay. Because I had the stream up, audio on, and also Discord, so I couldn't tell the difference. Okay, yeah. 
Uh, well, I was actually muted for a while there, so th there's that. That was disconcerting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, volume levels, chat. What do you think? I think I sounded really quiet from what I heard from my own feedback. Yeah, that's probably true. I'm gonna move my microphone real close. Just add in my little voice tag here for you. Just put it right over your face. Just right over my face? Okay. I can rotate this, right? Yeah, upside down. There you go. Boom. There you go. I like it. <laughs> I'm cool with it. It's fine. I approve. This is MC Power Pockets approved. Excellent. It looks like a, just a big stamp. Oh, uh, so Proud drew you a Victorian pizza pocket last night. Who did? My, oh, our friend Proud. Are you telling me I'm going to have more than one Victorian pizza pocket image? This is amazing. Yes, uh, but they'll be entirely different. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> fine. That's what I mean. Oh, sweet. Pepper Pockets fan art. This is great. This is what I want. Yeah. Exactly. Now. Yep. Oh, it is. Totally. Uh, I don't remember what my Discord password is. <sighs> Man. I don't even know if I'm using the right account. Oh, I am. Cool. Just I'm just updating that Discord thing. Okay, we're good. We're good. Nice. All right. So, what's new, Sam? I spoke to you yesterday, but yeah, I mean, not a lot has <laughs> changed since yesterday. I don't know. That's good. Uh, you missed it, but I did plug next week's uh read write stream excellent i hope everyone is read up on their uh anarcho syndicalism because you're gonna need that uh okay <laughs> that's good yeah uh i'm so prepared for that just you know just brush up like from the stuff you learned in school right <laughs> so here's what you yeah. should do actually probably the more accessible way read atlas shrugged and then just assume that everything's the opposite I'd rather just go back to school. Yeah, no, it's not that painful. <laughs> what, Atlas Shrugged? <laughs> this book. Oh, yeah. Or, or no, Atlas I think... Shrugged. It's painfully stupid, but it's it wishes it were good. Oh, man. You can't see me shrugging super hard right now, but that's what I'm doing. <laughs> that's good. Um... So yeah, uh, I don't know if Allison's gonna show up, but I do actually wanna wanna do that. Uh, so yeah, uh, the stream's good friend Allison. Um, I gotta do all my modding. 
Because uh, my mods don't know my commands. I don't know how to use Twitch. <laughs> Get over it. I Twitch. I, I, I post sparkly poos, and that's the extent of my ability. Yeah, I'm aware. Uh, so our good friend of the stream, Allison, uh, who used to be known on Twitch as Smishmosh22, uh, she's been rebranding. Anyway, she's an awesome Canadian screenwriter. Uh, she does a lot of cool things on stream, like logline uh, rewrites and things like that. Um, so yeah, really cool stuff. But she was in a uh, screenwriting competition this weekend in which her script for Log, a uh, horror comedy movie that she wrote, uh, won first place, which is amazing. And we're all really proud of her. Um, so yeah, congratulations to Allison for that. Yeah, it's better than bad. It's good. It's really good. For those who don't know, Log is a horror movie about a, a, uh, log of wood that comes to life and starts killing people. It's kind of fantastic. Like actually. <laughs> it's big, it's heavy, it's wood. Yep. Um, so I'm going to start out with the flash fiction stuff and then I'll go into some of the deeper stuff afterwards just because I want to get warmed up. Um, so yeah, what do you know about flash fiction, Sam? Flash fiction is fiction that's under a thousand words. Right. Our I'm going to be specific. Defined. Well, you're not wrong. <laughs> you came back in the room to killing people. It's fantastic. Um... No, I was talking about my friend Allison's uh, award-winning script, uh, Log, about a killer log that comes to life. The script itself is fantastic. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you're not wrong. Flash fiction is fiction generally under a, th a thousand words or less. Um, I'm specifically going to be doing what we call a drabble. Yeah, like in basketball. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you don't, uh, then you get carrying you get sent to the penalty box yep that that is entirely accurate uh -huh. and um, you can't score a hole in one uh sam is a sports visionary you can tell everything that happens that everything that he says sports related wise is what what happens in real life um so yeah uh these flash fiction challenges are erica drayton's flash fiction challenges uh, basically, the idea is to write a short story of 250 words or less in which uh, using the main character and the plot stuff that uh, are generated, uh, post them on her Discord, they end up on a uh, on Erica Drayton's website uh, for her Discord, uh, which is, what is the URL for that website? <laughs> I can't remember. Wait, sorry, which website? I was doing something else. Uh, Erica's website. Oh, Erica do you know what it is? Com. I mean, that's her. I think that's her personal website. <laughs> uh, I'll find it. Give me, give me one sec. It's in Discord. Well, just just go to at Erica Drayton on Twitter. I'm sure there's a link there as I attempt to find that. I got it. It's fine. So yeah, um, this is the website. Anyway, uh, all the flash fiction is kind of posted on here. When you post it in Discord, uh, my, story, my story from week five is here somewhere. Where are you? Boom. Here we go. <laughs> she just copied and pasted my author's note. Ugh. No, <laughs> that's jokes. Yeah, so you can check it out there. I'll, I'll post the link in the chat. So it's interesting that you asked that question, Proud. The answer inherently is yes and no. <laughs> um, 
I think, and I this is an opinion shared mostly by me and not necessarily by other people, but I personally think the process is exactly the same. Uh, a lot of people would disagree with me. I think there's some mechanical differences, but I don't think the way you approach it is different. In fact, I've been using art a lot to inspire how I'm learning about writing. Um, I know Sam's heard me talk about it a lot where I've been trying to do a lot of like kind of studies where, you know, I, I sit down and I write a bunch of dialogue to learn how to do dialogue better. That's something that artists do all the time where they'll sit down and they'll, um, they'll sit down and they'll like work on perspective or they'll work on color value, uh, or they'll, well, just value color is inherently part of value, uh, or they'll work on lines or whatever. Right. So Writers don't do that. Writers tend to be people who work on projects all the time. If you're not like, there's not really a sort of middle ground there. Would you agree with that, Sam? Uh, no, completely not at all. I sometimes okay. write things that are just a thing that a character did. And then like, I don't, that's not part of anything. It's just so I can kind of get to know that character. I've definitely okay. done that both for stories and for like pen and paper RPG stuff. I mean, that's what, that's what my whole two score thing started as. Okay. Trying to find that character's voice. Yeah, I can like, see that. It was like a, it was like the pencil sketch you do before painting something. That's what how I think of it. Yeah, no, that's totally fair. Um, but this kind of just demonstrates that everyone's, not everyone, but all, there are a lot of different approaches to. It. Yeah, no, that's definitely true. Um, yeah, you like it. Like, rail you completely. <laughs> no, 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 no. That that's totally valid. Uh, I just like a lot of the writers I interact with are always like, I'm working on my novel, or like I'm doing this and that and the other, right? And they're not really uh, doing those little bits in between necessarily as much. Well, do you think it's just because they like the project itself is what they talk about, and they're or they simply aren't doing those other things at all? I mean, that's a good question. Uh, actually, I don't know. Uh, I suspect it's probably both, depending on who you ask. Because <laughs> I know I don't, I don't talk about a lot of the dumb little like crap where I'm just like describing a room for a page because it's boring and no one else cares and it, nobody else needs to see that or know about it really. But well, I mean, I inherently disagree. <laughs> but that's because I mean that's kind of what I've been trying to do with this stream, right? Like show those elements like show that process so that people can learn yeah. um, or so I can learn mostly actually. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, that makes sense. And, and you're not wrong about that. it being boring. <laughs> Thanks. It's definitely. boring. No, no. I, <laughs> I was talking about myself. <laughs> I'm definitely boring for that stuff sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the oven bird. It's really more about length than it is about time spent. That being said, I find shorter word counts means you can be faster with it in general, unless you're spending time nitpicking a lot, um, which which happens. Um, yeah, I for sure spend more than a day on things that I never intended to be more than like 500 words. Yeah, it definitely happens. Um, yeah, it to it totally happens. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's what I've been trying to do, Proud. Like, um, my friend Derek, uh, sort of started on his stream, uh, John Derek Murphy, uh, who I talk about all the time, if, if you've hung around me enough times. Uh, he has been sh doing a lot of stuff where he'll spend an entire week working on one image from start to finish and show all of the little bits in between. And then he'll do like a couple weeks of studying to get his skills back up or to, to keep working on certain skills that he feels like he could improve on. And I, and I very much took that as an inspiration. Oh yeah. Yeah. You are proud. I knew that. God, I've hung out with you there. <laughs> um, but yeah, like he does that sort of thing. And uh, in a lot of ways, he inspired me to do my kind of thing where, you know, 
the pro like these projects that I've talked about, these unfinished projects are stuff that I've only worked on on stream. I've never, I've like, I haven't worked on them off stream ever. Um, so every single part of the weird editing process of like me scratching my head going, I have no idea what I'm doing right now. That's all on camera for better or for worse. So yeah. Um, I had a question for you, Sam, and I can't remember what it is. I'm not so, yeah. sure what it would be about. Well, actually, here's a question. Uh, let's compare processes. Okay. Uh, you want me to start? <laughs> yeah. Just because mine Please. is completely different from what you do. Um, exactly. Usually, I mean, it's kind of a little different every time. But like usually when I'm sitting down or, or I come with an idea, I'm thinking about uh, it, it kind of varies, but a lot of the time it starts as like a central feeling for what I want it to be like. Like what is like the kind of emotion that I want to evoke? And then um, I'll kind of build an idea, build a scenario out from that. So whether it be feeling anxious and pursued and that becomes a story or feeling just frustrated and uh, trapped and, and so then like the characters emerge out of that uh, thing. But then when I start writing it, it's usually just a uh, kind of, I, I just kind of try and flow and, and write a bunch of stuff and usually it's garbage at first and I'll go back and use that original version as like scratch notes and kind of totally redo it using almost nothing of the original text. And I, I don't do a lot of plotting beforehand because I try and like throw the characters into scenarios and once I know what they're like and how they react, I'll, I'll, I'll put them in a place and see how they behave there. And that, that's yeah, mostly it, is I try and just let the characters tell their own story. Yeah, no, no, that's that's definitely true, Proud. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I agree. I uh, my streams are basically a, a long tr train of thought that just gets derailed all the time. Uh, yeah, no, my my process is entirely different uh, than yours, Sam, and we've discussed this several times, like a lot off stream as well. But um, yeah, for me. Um, for me, I'm definitely a planner. I start off with at least a somewhat of a plan of an idea of what I want want to do, how it starts, how it ends, sort of thing. Um, that being said, like I'm not afraid to change that plan on the fly if if need be, but I definitely start with a with a sort of a a framework in place. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've been thinking a lot about it. Uh, I know I mentioned to Erica one time uh, last week, I was reading this article in Writer's Digest about plotzers, uh, plotzers versus pantsers. So people who plot and people who fly by the seat of their pants. And uh, it, yeah. So they had like a little quiz and whatever, and it tells you what, what uh, like based on your score, it tells you like what you are. So it's a scale of negative 15 to 15. Which seems like a really silly scale to me, but whatever. <laughs> well, they're just trying to be like uh, tennis. Like tennis? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. They got 15 somewhere in there. Uh, yeah, they got... It's, it's 15, 30, 40, 50. Or negative 15. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I did the quiz, and turns out I'm a negative 3... Uh, so Which like, does that fall on? Uh, plotting, I believe. Oh, I'd so, have to look at. It. So plotting is clearly negative, is what they're saying. So I am doing. It. <laughs> so I'm uh I'm a negative three, but that basically means like I'm very very close to right in the middle. <laughs> 
on that scale. Yeah. Like real close. And so I, I think I'd probably fall only just into the positives because when I start, I don't have a plan, but then I will eventually get frustrated and be compelled to make a plan out of the stuff that I've figured <laughs> out so far. Yeah, I mean, that's what happened with Dreamers, right? Where you're just yeah, like... I'm not so sure I've got the plan there yet. <laughs> Although I definitely drew a sketch of the station the other day, and that's that's helping me. And that's kind of like planning. You like know? a map? Just a... Um, yeah, kind of. Yeah, because I find maps for, like, locations so useful. <laughs> yeah, I just like want, if you're... I wanted to know the yeah. geography. Of like, okay, if, if I'm going from A to B, what do I pass by? Or, you know, like, what is... What are the the major landmarks and and mechanisms of this place? Yeah, I, I'm thinking of drawing a map for uh, traveling. Well, yeah. the The middle isn't actually negative three. The middle is zero. But I'm just saying that negative three on a scale of negative fifteen to fifteen is very very close to the middle, like as middle as you get. <laughs> negative eighteen to plus 12 you're exactly in the middle yeah i just thought it was interesting um but then i was talking to erica about it and she was like she she raged at me super hard uh because she's like oh man don't start that stuff because people are people are all like uh whatever one they do is the best and whatever one the other people do is the worst and they hate it yeah, and it not... turns into terrible conflicts apparently <laughs> i've never heard this before Stop and i was like things I don't oh like. <laughs> <laughs> oh interesting um plus she made this whole long argument about how every writer has to be both because you can't not be both or, or your writing will suck and I think she makes a reasonable point because that's kind of exactly what you were talking about, right? Where it's like you'll do a whole draft and then you'll scrap it with a plan and put a plan in place to make it into a real thing. So like you do both. Yeah, oh, every, almost every time. Yeah. Only maybe if I'm writing something really like flash fiction, where I'll just have a, like it's short enough that that initial idea can be the whole thing, and there's no additional planning is required because that is the plan. Yeah. Yeah, I know, totally. <clears throat> what's uh what's today's uh wor uh prompts? The the photo fiction prompt and I haven't written anything for it yet is really good. Uh let me let's find a link for it here. But it's like a pier out over water with just a kind of vague city in the background. And I I pretty sure I know what I'm gonna do. that in chat. So stop fucking around and do that. <laughs> That's a nice pick, actually. Yeah, it's great. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, this is going to be good. I can get something cool out of this. I mean, the skylight sucks, but whatever. The, not... the dock it, the dock itself looks really cool yeah that's kind of my point if you exclude the stuff on shore and like the obvious parking lot in the background <laughs> yeah yeah uh so sam uh is big on wordpress now i guess huge <laughs> it's the best and he does all of their daily prompts and stuff not all of them i actually pretty much only do the weekend ones now because i don't have enough time to do the weekly ones but but that's because you're writing right yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. yeah which i think is okay uh i think if someone wanted to like if someone was having trouble writing and wanted to make a habit of it doing those kind of things is super useful um i agree it's excellent practice i mean that's how you kind of got your momentum right to start diving back into echo and and all that kind of stuff too yeah uh it it gets your head kind of in that writing space uh, without it having to be a huge investment and uh and i mean it's like it's like if you want to start exercising you just got to do something small at first and then work your way up when you have the endurance for it yeah for sure uh 
Uh, so a daily prompt for WordPress is just like a w single word that they use to inspire a story. So like ones that I've seen, um, lonely, I think was one, uh, there was definitely, uh, I don't know. You're the expert, Sam, you tell them. <laughs> yeah. It, every day on, on WordPress, um, there's on the daily post, there's a one word prompt. Today's is symbiosis. You know, sometimes they're fancy words. Sometimes they're just like dirt or something. And then you just you just write something that's inspired from that. And it doesn't have to be a piece of fiction. It can be anything you want. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. The one I did was called Craft. That's what it was. Oh, sorry. I had to mute. I had lint on my microphone, and trying to get that off on stream would have sounded horrendous. <laughs> Yeah, no, I hear you, Proud. I mean, not everyone is a big reader, um, for sure. Uh, to be honest, I don't read as much as I should. <laughs> um, I read a ton of comics, though, like a lot, a lot. <laughs> More than I read novels and stuff. But I know Sam, like, basically reads a novel every month sort of thing. I read, I, I read a novel almost every week. Yeah, well, I didn't want to over-exaggerate, <laughs> but yeah. I'm up to 13 books so far this year. Yeah, I'm at a 150. Yeah, but they're friggin' comic books. <laughs> Technically, they're manga volumes, so whatever. They're longer than a single issue or something. Yeah, whoa, whoa the whole 30 pages. What do you mean? Like, you mean 200 pages, right? Sure, <laughs> That's what you sure, meant? Sure, sure. <laughs> Yeah, um, I would actually started that statement with saying, uh, yeah, Sam reads a book every day, and then I realized that that was incorrect, so. I, I'm, I read a book every day, I just don't finish it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not, we're not uh, like Mark Zuckerberg cool to read a book every day. Yeah, well, it, when you're in your, your billion dollar mansion in the Bahamas and you have nothing better to do than shit post on your Facebook, and read books then i mean you can get away with that <laughs> yep damn you zuckerberg where are my I actually, audience i think he reads really fast too I'm a, I'm a huge fan of graphic audio proud. It's the coolest. Uh, where'd it go? I have too many notes. So the two recommendations I got for books, Sam, were Scott Sigler's The Writer and Armor by John Stakely. Sorry, what? These are the audiobooks? Uh, these are the books that uh, some guys in chat recommended to me. Oh. Okay. The writer is uh, is in the world of uh, the GFL. <laughs> but it's about uh, midgets who ride dinosaurs in a bloody arena battle. I'd buy that for a dollar. I don't know. That's apparently what it's about. But the sports in that that world are weird weird as hell. So fair enough. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it's a universe entirely constructed around just weird sports. Yeah, but I mean, like, what are future sports going to be like? Are they all going to be the same sports that we have now? Well, I mean, we're not playing blitzball yet. I'm waiting for that. Because <laughs> I don't think baseball is going to survive. Uh, another hundred years to be honest no why not uh it's too long there's no real ways to speed it up uh That's what she said i guess well okay <laughs> but what about cricket like it's been long around for a lot longer and it's way more popular than baseball if you're just having, but it's like, but it's also faster paced yeah but it more interesting for way longer well that's true 
that's true yeah no i don't think you're wrong it's just hard to say right because like if you think about it if you watch like a league of legends like broadcast for example it's like eight hours <laughs> or like six hours or something right like sure but nobody watches those well about as many people as watch baseball apparently do you think <laughs> I have no idea what the viewership number numbers are for baseball. Someone provide us statistics. Yeah, where's our? Uh, why did our producer not give us any of this information in advance? <laughs> exactly. The studio is terrible. Um, because for example, uh, like the World Championships, like the League of Legends World Championships. Uh, that got almost as many viewers as the Super Bowl. <laughs> what? I'm not joking. That's absurd. And they filled an entire stadium to do it. By the way, like a uh, like the Staples Center, which is where uh, the Lakers play. Oh my God, that's that's nuts. But <laughs> yeah, Lady it Gaga is. There. No. Okay. Well, then I think we know what the answer is. Out of all the Super Bowl halftime shows, you went with Lady Gaga? <laughs> Look, she skydived or something into the stadium? I don't know. I didn't watch the Super Bowl. I don't know. I didn't watch the Super Bowl either. <laughs> I don't care about the Patriots. I don't will not watch another Super Bowl with Patriots in it. I just, like, whatever. <laughs> I know you don't know who they are. It's fine. What, the Patriots? They're from yeah. New England. They're the weirdest team because they don't represent a specific city. <laughs> what, what team represents a region? That's so strange. And like, not there's, a, there's a few of them, actually. Really? Yeah. Uh, Arizona Coyotes? Arizona's a state. New England is like this nebulous collection of cultural regions. Yeah, but it's not like they play everywhere in Arizona either. <laughs> Right, but at least there's like hard lines. Oh, uh, that's fair. I don't know. Sport talk over. <laughs> I don't know. This is like the third time I've got you to talk about sports this stream. I'm doing pretty well. I can talk about sports all day. I'll sound like an idiot, but I'll do it. <laughs> all right. Well, it's 105. Uh, do you want to take a break or do you want to just keep going? Uh, you usually take a break. We should take a break. It's not break okay. tradition. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. Someone here gets me. I'm like not even that into sports. It's just when when I talk to about like I I like sports to an extent, so like I'll talk about them a little bit. But it's just like in these rooms, I feel like I'm like a ridiculous sports nerd, and I'm not <laughs> because. Uh, oh yeah. Just the way. I mean, there's the people who are like, well, you know x player scored this many goals over the last 25 years and they can just recite statistics like they're freaking farmer's almanac of sports yep yeah my brother's the sports guy <laughs> anyway i'm pretty yeah. sure it's break time yeah it's break time all right so uh take a 10 minute break and i will see you all in a bit